Hi, this is Tom Mira from World Class Coaching with this week's animated drill. And we're using the Planet Training software. If you don't currently have an online software tool that you use to create the diagrams for your training sessions, I'd, I'd really suggest having a look at Planet Training. Very easy platform to use, uh, creates fantastic diagrams, easy to save, a great way to archive all of your soccer drills. If you listen to our podcast at coachingsoccerweekly.com, you know that I did a coaching course in Florida on Koji training. And this is the basic setup that they use for all of their Koji training exercises. So I wanted to go over this pattern today because I think it's a really powerful one that you can use for a lot of different things, no matter really what you're trying to achieve. So uh, the basic setup is five cones placed in a cross. And this cross, you can vary the size depending on what you're trying to do uh, with this here I've got it set up as 10 yards from the center. So it's 10 from the outside to the center, 10 from the outside to the center, and so on. Uh, and to begin with, that's kind of how I'll discuss it here. And so you've got the cone set up in this pattern. You have the players, and this is really important, you have the players all to one side of that cone. The What I'll tell the players is put your left hand on the cone so that your left hand is over that cone. So we're on the right side of the cone. So everybody's on the right side of their cone. And then what we've got is we've got a pattern that creates angular movements because in soccer very little is linear so everything in koji training looks at uh, angular movements so that we're going one way changing direction going another as we would in the game and so the way this is set up if we're using the player from the bottom here we've got a player that's running from the bottom line here they're running around this central cone and they're going out to the left and we have that same pattern repeated with our partner now to begin with when players are first learning this pattern, we only go two at a time. We go two at a time because we don't want to over confuse this situation in the middle. Now, these lines really, I'd like to be a little bit closer to that cone so that we can cut and change direction and just kind of show that to the players. I really want to make sure they're turning around that cone quite sharply and changing direction. So we go first that direction. And then when the players are done in that direction, then the players go from the other direction. Again, same pattern. They're going out and to the left. So using this curved line here, we're going out from their line around the cone and to the left. And then that same pattern is performed by their partner on the other side that goes out to the middle and then to the left. So we've got that continuous movement. We'll do first one, you know, we'll first have the end players go in this case, and then we'll have the two side players go and we'll come uh, continue to repeat that pattern, getting the players to go out and left. So every time they go again, they're at the beginning of a new line. They're still going out and left, but they have a sli uh, slightly different view of the area in terms of the players that are around them. So they, they have to make sure they're concentrating. And, and such a big part of Koji training is getting the players to concentrate on what it is that they're doing. So this first pattern is without a ball. Now you can then, as soon as the players get that, you can start to have all four players go at once. So if we have all four players completing that pattern at the same time, and ideally, and here's the key, ideally we want these players all arriving in the center at the same time. If they arrive in the center at the same time, they'll be able to turn around each other in a pretty tight pattern where none of them are running into each other, nobody's in each other's way. If you get somebody that arrives too soon, arrives too late, that's when the confusion happens and they have to deal with that confusion. They have to deal with that traffic in the middle and try to, to evade people and find the open space. And at first I let the players do that and just kind of find their own way. But then I'll suggest to them, can they arrive at the same time? And it'll make that rotation so much easier. So we'll have all four players at the start of each line go at once. And they're going out and to the left and out and to the left and out and to the left. So everybody's completing that pattern. Now, now we're getting a good warm up. You can do warm up patterns within this. You could have players, you know, do high knees to the middle and then turn around the cone and run out. You can have them do any of a number of you know, normal exercises that you would do in a linear pattern. Now you've got angular movements and you've got the players thinking, so you're better preparing them to move on to the next part. Now you could use this as a warm up for a game. I've done this uh, actually this last weekend where I made these distances only five yards apart. Didn't want long runs. The players knew the pattern already. I just wanted quick out and to the left. Now obviously the next phase of this is you take the players and you put them on the other side of the cone. So we have the player's right hand over the cone or they're standing on the left side. And if they're standing on the other side of the cone, they're basically going out and then turning in the other direction.
not complicated you would think, but it's really confusing for the players at first to you know keep that in mind where they're going. They've got a teammate coming at them. Are they staying on the correct side of the cone? What you'll get is you'll get a player that'll go right on the cone. So when they're running out, they're here, and now they're not quite sure if they're supposed to turn left or right. You know, so that getting the players to stand on the correct side of the cone, depending on where they're starting, really affects how this exercise works. So we've done that without the ball. We've done it in with different movements. You can also have the players check in and check out. For example, a player could make this run to the middle as they, you know, as we did before, but then you could have them check back within and, and the way we talk about it is one yard from the cone. So they're going out a yard past the cone, they're checking back. Uh, one yard to there, and then they're completing that run to the end line. And we'll just show that here with the line. And we're doing this same pattern on both sides at the same time. So the player's coming out, checking back, going around. Same thing here. Players coming out, players then checking back, players then making that run around to the left. So, you know, just creating now some changing of direction. So we've, we've gone out, back, and then to the left. So you can complete that first with two people, then with four, and so on. Now, the natural progression to this is you throw a ball in. And you throw a ball in again, starting back with only two players. And, and to kind of lessen the confusion so that the players understand it. So they're basically doing the exact same pattern, the exact same movements, only now they have a ball. So when they have a ball at their feet, now they've got all the technical components that they have to deal with, with dribbling on top of remembering where to go, trying to time their run so they get there at the same time as their partner. So we create as little confusion as possible, but we could have every player in every group with a ball. We could have the player only at the start of each line with a ball. If you do that, then you're going to slow it down a little bit because you want the player to pass the ball on to the next person in line. And so that, that can be a good thing and that can be a trigger. You know, nobody goes until everybody has the ball. So you can go like that where we're dribbling, creating those patterns. Again, the same thing we can do with changing direction. So you can add the change of direction moves. Now you can also add passing to this. So we could take the ball away from the players, you know, say on the side and have the players on the end making their run as they did before, making their curved run here around this spot, but once they get around this spot, then they're passing to the next player in line. So they get here, they make that tight turn around that cone, and then they come here and they make their pass to the next person in line. So that by making that pass, now we're triggering the next action with the pass, making sure that both players get the ball before that next group goes. And that's really important because we want them timing it together. We want them being aware of where their partner is and how quickly they've arrived. We want to make sure that the ball is a good ball. So if there's a bad pass, then the next group doesn't go until the ball is retrieved and, and we've set up that you know, next player with the ball so that we're ready to go. So you, know, you can add passing to that. You can obviously do that with two. You can do it with four. You can change the, the angles of the pass and you can put a player out here into these spaces. And instead of having the players pass to the end of the line, We'll move that player up there. Instead of having the players move to the end of the line and pass, I should say, to the start of the next line, we can have them pass out to this player, and then this player then dribbles to here. And perhaps you know each of the players have a ball in that situation, or perhaps even instead of having that player dribble, we can just have that player make their pass to the first person in line here. And so then we've created angular passes on both sides rather than just having a straight pass to the, to the beginning of the line. You know, the, the key here is that we make sure that we have the players making these angular runs and angular passes. And, you know, this kind of a setup accomplishes that with dribbling. You could also add the change of direction. So they could come in, change direction, then make their pass, then make an angular pass. So you can continue to layer confusion and layer complexity on top of it to really get the players thinking. And it's more motivating the more complexity you add because they want to achieve it. They want to figure it out. And they're basically just chunking one thing on top of another. They got the pattern, then they did it with a the ball, then they changed direction, now they're passing. And if you tried to introduce all of that at the same time, they'd never get it. But if you just layer it one on top of the other, they get that in chunks. And pretty soon they're creating really complicated passing patterns off of a very simple basic setup. 
So try that uh, pattern with your practices. You can take something you've already been doing. It doesn't have to be, you know, what I've described here, but just utilizing this format, maybe you can change it and get the players thinking a bit more. Thanks a lot.